Good evening everybody and welcome to our December televised Board of Education meeting and I'd ask you to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Linda, could I have a roll call, please? Mr. Bruder? Here. Mrs. Costelli? Here. Mr. Shea? Here. Ms. Dorr? Here. Mrs. Glidden? Here. Ms. Levesque? Here. Mrs. McKay? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Sort of. Mr. Botto? Here. <clears throat> Members present and voting. Perfect, thank you. Item number four is our student board reps. Let's start with Lyman Hall. Samuel, come on down. How you doing tonight? Good, how are you? Excellent. You must be getting ready to wind down the uh, ready for the Christmas break. Oh, I think everyone's ready for Yeah, I believe it. Tell us what's going on at Lemon Hall. So, on December 9th, we had our pop-up winter bakery at the Hub Cap. Uh, Dr. Menzo was there working alongside us. He was making some crepes. Uh, it was a huge success. We served over 400 people over the course of uh, five hours, it was. Wow. Yeah, and... Um, on behalf of the entire program, we'd like to thank the Board of Education and Dr. Menzo and everyone on the board uh, for allowing us to utilize the Hubcap for the past two years. Last year we had our winter bakery or winter pop up there, yep. and this year we continue the tradition. And it's just an honor to be able to work in a space as nice as that. And we'd also like to thank the uh, Board of Education for allowing our program to grow. It's I've been in it for the past four years, and even in just four years, it's grown so much. It's inc it's incredible to even see. But you know what? That's a reflection of. If I can, normally I don't interrupt, but um, but you know what? That's a reflection of in my mind is the superior work that you guys do. It's easy to grow a program when you have students and faculty, frankly, that are committed to the degree that you guys are committed. And the, your work ethic and the product that you produce are so superior. The fact that you even on a Saturday were willing to do this. So, you know, I thank you for recognizing board work, but you need to know that that's a really a reflection of the commitment of you and the staff. So I just wanted thank to thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's the truth. Uh, and in other culinary arts news, our restaurant, The Cook's Table, just opened up last week on Wednesday and Friday, and we were able to serve some of the uh, members of the board, Dr. Menzo, and um, there's a few others there. And we served over 120 plates uh, for teachers and administration of Wallingford Public Schools, uh, and it was great to see everyone be there, and it, it was the first of the, of the school year for us, so it was nice to see everyone working together in the kitchen and whatnot, and we're also um, opening up on Thursday, so if anyone wants to make a reservation. Already on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll, you'll nice, see us on Thursday. Nice to see you there, yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and last, or Friday night, this past weekend, Lyman Hall's Vivace and Sheehan's Varsity Chorus had a very, a very busy weekend. They performed along the country music legend Kenny Rogers at the Wallingford Oakdale, and they also were uh, singing with the Wallingford Symphony Orchestra yesterday. Wow. Um, Lyman Hall also hosted 119 families of prospective students. Uh, for our Ag Ed open house this past month. And um, last Tuesday on December 12th, we had our Instant Decision Day hosted by the College and Career uh, Center at Lyman Hall. I know Sheehan had one as well. It was a little, I think it was the week before us, but uh, this past Tuesday we had that and we had a total of 21 students participating and what, we had 100% acceptance rate um, between the schools that they applied to. There were schools like Quinnipiac, Southern, Central, uh, Albertus, there were six of them. And uh, there was a 100% acceptance rate between the students that participated. Uh, and our parent-teacher conferences were this past week as well, which ended up having a great turnout. And as far as winter sports go, uh, they're in full swing, and there's a few updates for the teams so far. Indoor track had a meet with over 50 schools yesterday at Hill House, and they placed second place overall. And several of the runners also qualified for the state meet. And that's just it's just nice to see that happening, especially this early in the season with everyone's hard work and effort that they put in. Um, as far as boys swimming goes, their first meet is on Friday. They're working hard uh, to practice and be prepared for that meet and the season up to come coming up. Uh, girls basketball have started their season off strong, uh, recently improving to two and one. Boys basketball uh, is having their first game tonight as we speak right now. Um, hockey uh, is starting up their season. Now, and on Saturday, January 13th, there's the Lyman Hall Sheehan hockey game, the first one out of two. Uh, that is going to be hosted at the North the Northford Ice Pavilion, if anyone wants to come down and see the, both teams play. 
and cheerleading. Uh, the tryouts have just taken place and the team's getting ready for their competition season in February. Okay. Looking ahead, on January 11th, our Unified Theater production will be taking place at 7 p.m. at Lyman Hall. Uh, I'd like to extend the invitation to everyone uh, to come down and see the Unified Theater. They put on great shows for the past three years that I've seen. And on January 15th, Martin Luther King Day, several of Lyman Hall students will be presenting their and reading their essays at the presentation you guys put on, at, that they put on at the school. Um, also that weekend, the Lyman Hall and Sheehan Ski Clubs will be heading up to Okemo Mountain in Vermont um, for their weekend ski trip. And midterm exams begin on the 17th of January, and we have a Choices Matter program, which will run on January 25th. Uh, we'll, that will feature an inspiring guest speaker that will educate juniors and seniors on making the right choices now and down the road. Thank you, and I hope everyone has a nice holiday season. You Thank you, Sam, and also we wish that of you and your family. Hope you have a great holiday, and thanks for the update. Great job. Um, I'm assuming we don't have an update for Marty Sheehan, and that's a sign of the times. It's Christmas holidays, everybody's running, so we understand how that is. Um, item five, presentation and awards, Dr. Menzo. Yes, we have a few this evening. Um, first, though, I'm going to surprise one of them. Um, he's actually behind the scenes in the room. So would Evan Lucier please come out of the control yes. room? Yeah. Is he back there? I, I saw him come yeah, in. There he comes. Evan? Come on. Evan. <laughs> Evan. <laughs> Evan. We're going to embarrass you because um, that's my job. <clears throat> You're always behind the camera. We wanted to get you in front of the camera tonight. Um, Evan, for those who are watching at home and those, all of our board members know Evan. Um, Evan has done a remarkable job over the last two years in particular, making certain that all of our video is um, prepared based on all of our meetings. And now with the budget season kicking in, he's going to be working a lot of hours trying to make sure that we're constantly keeping our parents and community members informed through our YouTube channel. He also is the person who puts together our summer video for the holiday cinemas uh, and a variety of other things that he's working on, actually one with a pop-up. Um, he's going to be doing a little piece for Channel 19 and for our website on the pop-up uh, bakery. So I just wanted to say, and I know that our board all agrees that we cannot thank you enough for your dedication, your commitment to everything you've done, helping us get this all put in place. And you really do a great job. You have a great way about you. Um, you help us with the technology at central office as well as throughout the district. That's your other job. You're not just here to do video. You work with teachers and students and making sure that we're functioning on a daily basis with your other colleagues. But I know that Ms. Veyu, our technology director, would agree that you definitely deserve this recognition. So thank you so much. Uh, we're really pleased to have you on our staff and definitely part of our team. So thank you. So um, this evening is the last board meeting for four of our board members, and we'd like to recognize each of you um, for your hard work um, over the last several years. And really, um, I have to say personally, it's been a pleasure working with each of you. Um, you have each brought to the board, um, and to me personally, different attributes that have helped me grow professionally and personally in my role as superintendent to help bring our district to a, a greater level of success for our students and our families. And I, I just can't say enough about that. Um, as I talk to and I say this to all of you, um, quite frankly, all the time, I'm blessed as a superintendent to work with each of you uh, as closely as we do in many good times and many difficult times, making difficult decisions for students and families. And you all take it so seriously. And the four of you have exemplified that. Um, and I truly will miss you. Uh, you bring to us your business mindset in some instances, your communication skills, your compassion, your empathy. You're truly caring about the community and students. And I would invite you back at any point. Uh, and uh, to be honest, I mean, our new board members have hard act to follow um, because you all have dealt with this and I'm, you know, with a certain level of, of, uh, of commitment but also making certain that you're doing things in the best interest of all students, and, and I truly appreciate that. So we do have a token of our appreciation. Um, as always, me being the English language arts teacher, um, I wanted to make sure that we donated a book uh, for each of you uh, in the name, in your name for your commitment to the school district, and then we have a set of bookends 
uh, for each of you um, at home, for, to have at home or in your office or whatever it may be. So first, Mr. Broder, uh, we have donated to Dag Hammarskjöld uh, Middle School Elementary, uh, Middle School Library, the success principles for teens, how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Um, so we felt that was a fitting book. So, here you go. Yeah, we'll take yeah. this back. Cause you want to read it, you know, during the meeting. You'll be <laughs> exactly yeah. Um, and for Mr. Shea, donated to the Lyman Hall Library. So Jay, if you want to come down, um, we have the book "What Unites Us: Reflections on Patriotism." That's so, so, thank you so much. And for Amanda, uh, to Moses Y. Beach Library, we have This Is How, it, How We Do It. And it's all about different activities, one day in the lives of seven kids from around the world. That's perfect. Yeah. And last but not least, Shauna, uh, we have Wish Tree. Um, and this will be donated to the Pond Hill Elementary School Library. So I just want to say on behalf of the Board of Ed, I I'm very, with heavy heart, um, I will miss the four of you um, for a variety of reasons. Um, it, you've always made my job very easy, and I love the collaboration I've had with the four of you. Um, just, I think about all the things you've contributed to our school district and your commitment and everything that Sal said, um, your sincerity, your fairness, your desire to make our community the best it could be for our students is overwhelming, and your Commitment and work will live way beyond this, the years of service, and that's the greatest gift you can give is the fact that it will live on beyond the years that you've served. So on behalf of the Board of Ed, thank you, thank you so much for your hard work and commitment, and all four of you will be sorely missed. So thanks. Okay, with that, um, item six, did I see, I thought I saw, hey Sam, do me a favor, would you, when you head out, and I'm not putting you on the spot, but I thought I saw Rajan in the hallway, and if he's there, um, tell him to come on in and I'd be happy to fit him in if, if he's out there. I thought I saw him, but I'm not positive, and I, I, I'm guessing he didn't want to interrupt. But in the meanwhile, item six, our public uh, question, are there... Any questions from the vast public we have this evening? I'm going to guess not. Um, item seven, consent agenda. Can I get a motion to accept uh, consent uh, to agenda item 7.1 through 7.8? So moved. Second. I have a first and second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries. Uh, we have no items removed from the consent agenda for item eight. Item nine, Mr. Votto, do we have any correspondence, sir? Yes, um, we have two gifts to announce. First, uh, from Choate Rosemary Hall Foundation, um, a gift of uh, about 18 iPads and a touch, touch screen uh, computer uh, with a value of $4,490. We thank Choate for that wonderful gift. We also have uh, from Holiday Cinemas, uh, a $1,200 value, uh, use of two theaters for screen agers, movie showing for students, parents, and community. We had that on October 12th, I believe, 2017. And we have a letter, uh, a note from the Tasmir family thanking us for our uh, support and generosity at this difficult time. Thank you very much, sir. Item 10, committee reports start with ACES. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yep. Uh, the ACES Governing Board met on December 14th, 2017. However, due to illness, I was unable to attend. 
but I would like to share some exciting news that I received in the documents for the December meeting. One of our students who attends Village School was recognized as a 2017 student designer. Students' designs are featured on ACES t-shirts, cards, and mugs. Our Wallingford student, Amber Guastella, was recognized as a card designer. And there are 93 Wallingford students attending ACES programs. That's, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Winter Green Magnet. Um, I believe at the last meeting I said I was waiting to get some information and I did send board members an email, but I think uh, uh, Linda had given us all a copy of the email. There is a PowerPoint from the oh, principal that day. That's um, it's very, uh, if you read that, you get a pretty good idea of what was discussed. Um, and there is an enrollment uh, by uh, district by district. At this time, we have 47 children attending uh, Wintergreen. And you'll also notice uh, I was I was making mention of this before. They have what we they call PTAC. Like I was kind of surprised. I thought they were following the lead with us, uh, following us. And in, indeed, it is not as the Parent Teacher Activities Committee. Uh, and then they list all the activities that are coming up through the school year. Um, and that's my report. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, school to career. There was no meeting this month. Thank you, sir. Uh, PTAC update. Dr. Menzo. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our meeting is on next, is tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow yeah that's night. right, it is tomorrow Yeah, tomorrow night, night is yeah. Tuesday. I keep yeah. thinking there's one more week before Christmas. Oh, mm -hmm. no. And there's we are not. here. So, yes, it's tomorrow night at the same time as the Sheehan um, winter concert. So oh, that's always a challenge. Miss Lavalette, I think, is going to the concert for me. Okay, thanks. Uh, plan of conservation development. Oh. Pat's not here, but I'm not sure if they had a meeting, so... They were supposed to have met, but I didn't hear Yeah, them. I didn't I didn't think to get his report, so I apologize for that. We'll get updated for our, our January meeting. Uh, food Service Strategic Plan. Dave. Our committee did not meet in December, and we'll be getting together on January 16th on Tuesday. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and then I will cluster 10.7 and 10.8, uh, Mark, for the stage lighting renovation updates and for school window replacement. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Good news. Last week, the town council approved the final bonding for these two jobs. Um, it's been a long time coming. The stage project I've been working on one way or another six or seven years now. So um, it's, that's finally coming to fruition, and the, um, the funding is in place. This, this week, we're, we're bringing the plans and specifications to purchasing, and they'll start the next phase of that uh, development. Um, we expect to go out to bid early winter, or late winter, rather, and um, this should be a good project. The stage lighting project is, uh, it involves projection screens, um, IT. Everyone um, has had some input on this project. We... Um, we, we recruited help from all the drama people in the district, all the teachers that use those rooms. So um, we hope that this will address their needs, and um, I'm looking forward to this project. Yeah, I, thank you, Mark, for that update. I, I just want to take a second um, and publicly acknowledge uh, the work and the relationship uh, between the Board of Ed, Town Council, and the Mayor. Um, this, this idea of uh, bonding for major capital expenditure projects that clearly are defined by dollar amount and uh, life expectancy of the project has really been a wonderful thing for the Board of Ed to be able to take these things out of our operating budget and really appropriately put them as a capital expenditure budget and uh, working with the mayor and the town council has, has been really effective and it's very much appreciated the relationship and the transparency and the commitment that they've made toward these projects for our schools that are sorely needed. So I just wanted to do that publicly. Thank you. Um, item 11, old business. I do not believe we have any for tonight. And item 12, Mr. Shea, you're up. Instructional. Thanks, Fraxin. Sure. And, uh... Thanks for going easy on me this last meeting. See, there's nothing. There's nothing to vote on. Um, item Actually, 12. Actually, that's point, true. Right? You know. 
So I do have a quick update for the Mastery Based Learning Committee. The work is ongoing. I am. I just wanted to point out and, and be thankful for it. The meetings are so very well attended for both district leadership and the Mastery Based Learning Committee meetings. The conversations have been strong. The teachers' reflections on practice are very insightful and always so student-centered. So it's really been a great experience all fall and we continue to make plans for the future and we will update the Board of Ed as those items arise. Thanks, Karen. Um, items as we go forward here, are there any that should be grouped? So 12.2. Where there are, feel free to group. Yep, so 12.2 through 12.9, it's the second read for those policies. Um, I was able to get some answers to questions that arose from the last instructional. I'll present that um, at the upcoming instructional meeting in January so that you have context before the final read. Okay, great. Any questions or any input? And we're all set. Great. Thank you, Thank you so much, Jay. Um, item 13 is our operations report. Mr. Berger, you're up. Sure. On December 11th, the operations committee met. Um, we went over the financial report. Um, which is pretty much for mo all intents and purposes based on the size of our budget is, a, is what I'll call break even at this point in time. It's a little below. Um, our cafeteria report, which again, um, kudos, is uh, continuing to be a break even, um, so that's good news. And our school calendar, which was recently approved uh, in our consent agenda, so that was it. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Um, item 14, new business. I do not believe we have any. And we are just rifling through this agenda. Item 15, uh, Dr. Menzo, your report, please. Yes, I have several additional donations um, that I want to share with the board and the community. <clears throat> um, I'll cluster some together. Uh, we had a donation from the Knights of Columbus uh, that provided uh, our Cook Hill Elementary School with 14 winter coats. Uh, so we appreciate that donation of nearly $400. Uh, we also have a variety of food items that were donated to the cook's table to provide for luncheons uh, recently. So we wanted to really share our gratitude to the local farms. Uh, Muddy Roots is one of the farms, uh, $125 worth of produce. We also have Furman Garden, which is, um, they donated some, a case of garlic. So we appreciate that. Being Italian, the garlic's gotta be in the, gotta be in the sauce, that's for certain. Uh, four cases of apples from the Norton Brothers Farm, valued at $320. We also had two boxes of tomatoes, one box of red peppers, um, donated from Beaumont Farm, at, valued at $120. Um, from the Ciccarelli Farm, uh, we had several items of produce valuing at over $310, so we appreciate that. And then JC Farms and Greenhouses, uh, a donation of over $120 in items that were used at the cook cook's table. So again, as was mentioned by Sam earlier in the meeting, that program really um, needs these donations because the, all the money that's raised goes back into the program to maintain the equipment, maintain uh, service agreements on the equipment, and also expand services for the students. So we could not run those program or that program without these resources. So thank you to all those community members and also to the Knights of Columbus for their gracious gift of the 14 coats to Cook Hill students. Um, I do want to echo Sam's comments. The pop-up bakery was absolutely phenomenal uh, to serve that many people on such a lousy Saturday morning. Um, oh, yeah. And people came back every, uh, they were, there was a line down the street and it was snowing and people still came back because they wanted to experience um, the food from the students. Um, so I have to say, I did not get to eat a single thing except a bag of chips at the end that were made by the students because the food was, you know, going quickly um, and we wanted to make sure the students got home safely because the weather started deteriorating a lot quicker than expected. But I congratulate the students and uh, the staff, especially Sharon Distropolis, for hard work and Julia Esposito, who was the key person behind the Winter Bakery concept. Um, in addition, uh, I just would like to say again, if you're in the mood for holiday music, tonight, tomorrow, Wednesday night, Thursday night, there's a concert for you at one of our schools. Tonight we have, it's at Mor um, Moran, but it's being, I believe it's hosted at Sheehan High School. And then we also have concerts tomorrow night, as I mentioned, at Sheehan High School. On Wednesday, it's um, Lyman Hall High School. 
And actually, in the event of snow, which there not isn't going to be any, that would have been the, the snow date for Sheehan and Lyman Hall, which would have been fun to try to get mm -hmm. to both. Um, so again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if you're interested in music, please feel free. Um, all the concerts are free to community members. Uh, Kenny Rogers, I had the pleasure. Miss Lavalette was there. I was there. Uh, Kenny was Kenny. Um, <laughs> but um, I have to say our students, uh, again, just a great show. He's, you know, just a, a, a consummate professional and performer. And our students were phenomenal. I got a little nervous because the first song they sang way in the back of the stage. And I'm like, wait a minute. We're, you don't put us in the back of the stage. And then the next song, he invited the students up front. And they sang two more uh, songs uh, up front on the, the and they really on the apron. So nobody's putting baby in the corner. Exactly, exactly. So we made sure there was a donation, um, or there is to be a donation coming to the school district for the students performing with Mr. Rogers, um, and so we'll find out what that, what that is. What that is. So hopefully, it's a decent amount of money that we could split between the two schools. So Ken, if you haven't made the check out yet, add a couple of zeros. Um, <laughs> Before the decimal point. <laughs> Before the decimal, not after it. That does no, does no good. Um, but no, I just, again, I want to thank Oakdale for approaching us on this. Uh, we have a great relationship that goes back to Oakdale High. Um, so we really do want to thank them because they brought this to our attention. And then Paige Sperry and Jane Hafner just took it from there. And it was in good hands because I didn't have to worry. It was a combined concert, combined effort. Um, and it was great to see the students working together in that capacity. Um, as was mentioned earlier, also they, they sang with the, um, the symphony, the Wallingford Symphony yesterday, which I hear was a great performance. Uh, sports are underway, as was mentioned, uh, so we're fortunate we are, are doing well. Um, I know that I also would like to thank our maintenance staff uh, because with the sporting events, we do have to prepare a lot for those events, especially on evenings when it's less than great weather. Um, they still make it available to our students to have their games. As anybody knows who has children who played high school sports, it's very difficult to reschedule games. Mm. It becomes a very difficult activity, so we try to get as many games in on the nights they've been scheduled to accommodate that so that our students aren't playing multiple games in one week or there's a potential where they don't make up a game, um, which is seldom, but we work really hard, and I want to thank the maintenance staff for doing that. Uh, last week on Tuesday, there was a group of business uh, men um, and women who traveled to go see Trump in Farmington. I had mentioned that we were going to be doing a bus trip to learn a little bit more about the apprentice program from uh, this German company. Um, and I do know that there was some good information that was brought back. I'm meeting with uh, Tim Ryan from the EDC to review that information as well as some other opportunities that we're looking forward to bringing to our students. So I do want to thank uh, Tim for his assistance in helping this become a reality uh, for the local businesses in our district to be participants in that. Um, last thing I'll just say, there is going to be an email going out to all families. I believe it's scheduled for Wednesday to um, give the dates for the budget meetings. Mm -hmm. And so the first budget meeting we will be having is on January 17th, Wednesday, January 17th at 6 p.m. at the Board of Ed conference room on 100 South Turnpike Road. So again, that'll be going out as an email blast to all families. We're going to send it out this week. We're going to send it out the week when we get back, and we'll send it out the Tuesday before the meeting on the 16th uh, to continue to communicate those dates. And on the 18th in the morning, uh, families will receive the presentation from the night before with a survey that we do annually to get feedback on the budget. Um, so we'll have that scheduled to go out so we can move forward with those uh, initiatives. Um, and last, but not, certainly not, le not least, I just wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah ends tomorrow evening, so Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, um, and most importantly, a ha happy and healthy and safe New Year. Um, so 2018, uh, I'm sure it'll be just as exciting as 2017, <laughs> and hopefully even more rewarding for our students and families. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manzo. So with that, I, I just want to go through... 
our announcements, we have quite a few meetings, at least right now. Some are firm meetings and some are placeholders, depending on how our budget process goes. But starting with January 2nd, Tuesday, and all of our meetings uh, um, are held at our Board of Ed conference room at 100 South Turnpike Road. Starting with January 2nd um, is an instructional committee meeting at 6.30. Monday, January 8th, is actually the swearing-in ceremony, which will be held here at uh, the Robert F. Parisi uh, Town Council Chambers at 6.30. With immediately following that, we will have a special Board of Ed meeting at room 205 for leadership uh, determination. Um, January, as uh, Dr. Menzo mentioned, January 17th uh, at 6 p.m. is the start of our budget process, so that will be our first budget meeting. Uh, subsequent to that, we will have, uh, for sure, a budget meeting on January 24th at 6 p.m. And then based on that meeting, as, as needed, uh, we have place, place card holders for Jan Monday, January 29th and Wednesday, January 31st for uh, budget meetings, again, if so required. Um, we, just for edification for the public, we will, for our February televised meeting, actually vote on our budget. So it really is incumbent on us by approximately February 15th to have a solidified budget in place that this board is comfortable with and is uh, willing to put forth to or toward the mayor and then ultimately town council. Um, beyond that, um, our regular televised Board of Ed meeting is January 22nd, Monday, and again, 6.30 here at the Robert F. Parisi Town Council Chambers. Um, finally, I just want to echo the sentiment of Dr. Menzo. Um, obviously, we want to wish all of our uh, families a, 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 a happy and a safe um, holiday period and uh, look forward to a healthy and happy new year. And also beyond that, um, the Board of Ed would like to wish all Board of Ed staff at our buildings and our central office staff um, a, a great holiday season and an opportunity hopefully to relax, to recharge your batteries, enjoy family and friends, um, and come January 8, 2018 ready to go for budget. And I know that's a, a big burden for you guys and you've been working diligently on that and um, and it, it'll, I'm sure you're very excited to say now it becomes the Board of Ed budget. It's no longer your budget as I see heads nodding. So um, I guess with that, um, yeah, uh, sure. On the, uh, on the, am I on? Uh, on January 2nd, uh, we have an instructional committee meeting. That's before the swearing in. So does that mean present board members attend that meeting or because it, it would. Yeah. Would it, it would. It would. I just want to clarify that. Sure. Yes, and I, I know that that was something that um, has come up, and I guess the question is, we can postpone that meeting um, and move that. The recommendation of central office would be, if that's the case, then we would move it most likely to the sixteenth of January, the the Tuesday. I know it's a Tuesday, but it would be the day before the operations, um, right? Because the following week, as we know, it's very difficult to find a meeting that week because yeah. of different functions that are going on in the town um, and that you all belong to, so. So maybe what we could do, if I could make a suggestion, I, I mean, I'm seeing heads nod, so I, I'm, I'm getting an impression that it would be preferred to um, hold it to January 16th. And what I would ask, I guess, of central office staff is to see what the availability, um, and make sure we um, can support that. And if that sure. works, then, and if it works, for uh, curriculum, and I, I guess I look to you, Carrie, for that. Um, if that works for you guys to delay that meeting to January 16th, that might be the best route to go. But um, And then we will obviously send we out. Have, I know we have a system-wide PTAC meeting scheduled for January 16th, but okay. usually January's meeting, we encourage parents to go to the budget meeting right. instead of going to the PTAC, so that would be the next night anyway. So I think that we can, and we could talk about that can, tomorrow night with right. ETAC also, so they're not... See if it works yeah. for them, yep. and then, so you've kind of got your charge to see if it works for all the players, and if it does, we will communicate that, obviously, and you'll get that out on the website to make that change from January 2nd to January 16th. Absolutely. Okay, anything else for the good of the order? Yeah, go ahead, Michael. 
yeah, I just wanted to make a um, kind of, I guess, closing statements <laughs> as I uh, as I leave the board and have been here eight years. I wanted to uh, thank Central Office and obviously uh, Dr. Menzel's leadership and obviously the assistant superintendents and everybody else that participates in Central Office uh, for making our jobs easier up here. Um, you will be missed. Uh, it was tough, but you know, uh, unfortunately, the family comes first, and I had, uh, you know, it's my priorities, and uh, it will be missed, and we will be watching, and it'll be the first. You know, there's a lot that's happened in eight years. Um, I, I said I thank Jay for today for getting me involved because I probably would have never done it if he never came up to me at the golf course to ask me. But I, I will say, one thing he did tell me was that the board of ed is strictly for the kids. And I really saw it in the eight years I was here. So, um, you know, there's no party lines when there's decisions. Um, you don't know who's who. Um, you hear it a lot, but it, it's, it really is reality. Um, I remember in, in a meeting where there was a vote on, it wasn't even a finance uh, issue, um, whether it was a union negotiation or a finance issue or a curriculum issue, there, there's... Um, you know, Republicans and Democrats voting together, uh, not against each other. So this isn't a definite. This is definitely working together for the for the right reasons, and I appreciated that. Um, and that's what I'll miss. And I wish everybody here um, the best of luck. And I will say, you know, normally you hear people say, you know, I wish that you continue to do that. I know you're going to continue to to put the kids first, so I don't have to ask you to continue to do that. So I guess I would ask you folks that will be joining the board to keep that in mind that. You know, this board does operate um, really for the kids, and uh, we appreciate, um, you know, you guys putting the time in to, to be on the board and take our positions, and uh, hopefully you um, act on how you feel is right for the kids, not necessarily a party line. So that's all I want to say. So with that, happy holidays, and thank you very much to that, letting me have an opportunity to serve with everybody here and everyone that's been on before. So thank you. Thank you, Michael. Okay, anything else for the good of the order? Okay, so with that, um, this meeting's adjourned. Have a good evening.